the word that comes to mind more than anything when it comes to Haida artwork and Haida values is respect. It's about respecting the ancestors and the art that they created. Everything is really about respect. The thought was that the first explorers were coming from the spirit world and there was a lot of respect paid and of course ceremonies and spreading eagle down on the water and the headdress ceremonies to show that we were greeting them in peace as well. But that of course wasn't um, who arrived, it wasn't, they weren't people from the spirit world and it was a whole unfolding of colonization as we've experienced everywhere in the world. Smallpox epidemics hit so quickly that a lot of the elders said that there wasn't time to bury, bury the people who were dying, they were dying so quickly. It was a very, you know, obviously a difficult emotional time and a lot of loss and, and it was a time when raising of poles and, and practicing other cultural events was, was actually being uh, discouraged. Probably the last pole to be raised in Guayanas was over 130 years ago. So we haven't seen any re recent pole raisings in, in Guayanas. In some ways, we did collapse. With all of the impacts of colonization and the epidemics, our society and our structure and our culture collapsed. I wouldn't say it was a complete collapse, but a partial collapse, because there, there was this complete assault on who we were as a people, our place in the world, so we went from a real proud people to a very uh, desperate uh, people, really. This particular piece is called Salmon Dance. It is believed that all creatures, in particular supernatural beings, were like human beings underneath their skin. 
really leads into the thought that all creatures on this earth are equal to us. We're not any more important than the fish or the whales or the herring. to be a chief, it was James Seaweed's role to give potlatches, share his wealth. Now, 63, he has become a great chief by giving more, a lifetime of struggle to pass on to the young, a knowledge of their past.
call ourselves the people, we have a strong connection, strong connection to the land, to each other, and how we're, we deal with each other and how we relate to each other is all that we're a clan system, that we're divided into two moieties, and then we have separate clans, sub-clans under each moiety. Under the wolf clan, we have Yan Yedi, which is my clan, and then we have Daklawedi. They use eagle. And under the raven moiety, we have uh, Kokitan. They use the raven, raven as a crest. We have Ishkitan. They use the, the frog. And then we have Deshitan. They use the split-tailed beaver. And we're a potlatch society, which means that uh, potlatch and matrilineal and uh, moiety base. So those are a lot of slash, slash, slash. But the, the reason why uh, I say that we're moiety base is because, and it deals with potlatch, is that both sides relate to each other. We're separate and distinct, but we can't survive without the other side. And so it's a very interconnected society. Even though we're separate clans and separate moieties, we're still connected to each other through marriage and through, through, through interrelations. And that all comes out in a potlatch. When one moiety throws a potlatch, the other moiety sits and they get served. And then that favor that uh, is always returned when a clan, where the other moiety throws a potlatch. It's always about giving, giving and receiving.
you know, it's something I've been doing for 30, over 35 years. Got to follow the traditional um, steps, really. Like our ancestors, you know, they would probably carve it in uh, three months or so. <laughs> you know, they'd, without any aids of any pencils and paper. And, you know, they would just visualize it in there and just divide out all the sections and maybe use a piece of charcoal and so okay, I'm gonna cut it here, I'm gonna cut it here. The way I create my work is through, just through my mind really, uh, but it just comes to me really. Yeah. You know, I, I go for the, to the stories for inspiration. I heard many stories of the uh, interaction with the supernatural beings and that today, the curtain that separates us from the supernatural beings has become thicker, so it's harder to go there. So in that time, the curtain between us and the difference between our realms was very thin. Welcome these uh, wonderful artists who are dedicated to continuing our culture and uh, bringing back a lot of stuff that has been taken away from us. <laughs> These are the carvers who etch this totem pole into a 15-meter cedar trunk. It's about to be raised at a community gathering. Haida history is being made. Another pole is going to stand. We raised the, the Guayanas Legacy Poll in, in 2013 to celebrate the relationship that we had had. It tells the story of Guayanas right from the beginning of time up until today. I mean, it incorporates a number of different images that represent different periods of time and, and tells the stories. Okay, you guys ready? Ten, one, two, three, three. to commemorate you know how far we've come you know it's uh, it's kind of mind-boggling to think you know what, what can happen in 30 years you know because in that 30-year period you know we've done an unbelievable amount of things that's now kind of coming into context about how groundbreaking it all was
that's really what it's all about. I mean, it's, it's trying to create this balance. Right? So I think that's what we're, uh, you know, we're starting to do slowly. You know, and there's a lot of pressure on in, ensuring that the integrity is always there, but it's just such a different world today. But we have that history to rely on, on you know, the values and principles that we got to uphold in this. It does us well. I mean, that history is, has so much application in today you know, when we're sitting down with government or with industry. And, you know, looking back at the, the Haida the Haida Gwaii story, you know, I think people do you know treat us a little bit different here because you know, it's not just talk. It's we've walked that journey, and you know you have to be able to uh, continue that in a modern setting. Balance is about sustainability. We know that life on Earth is always changing, but on the other hand. Our place on this earth should be about keeping balance and not taking more than we need and also taking so much that the other creatures can't sustain themselves. Stone pot latch and it's given after a period of time after the, the funeral when the person passed away. So my grandmother, she she passed away back in January, so we just recently had our headstone potlatch. My younger brother, he actually passed away a long time ago, but he's in Thunder Bay and just circumstances, we never got around to putting a headstone down. And it was always something that was left unfinished. And I think the reason why the, our people and our elders have taught us that a headstone potlatch is, uh, is healing, it's closure. It's your, your period of mourning is over, and it's a time to celebrate and to remember the, the good life that this person, person lives and the, the good memories that they left behind and that their spirit is returned to the great river and um, a lot of times the spirit comes back and returns to, returns to our people. And so the headstone potlatch is saying it's okay, you can, you can continue on now. My clan, they emerged out of the ocean right on this very spot. Yeah? Yeah. The Creator put us here on this beautiful land. How are we going to protect it? And You know, you see how beautiful it is, and we want to keep it that way, so. Spiritually powerful as well. They got logs and pushed it. Then they got a team of horses and tried to pull it over. They took off, and nobody's ever tried to blow it up since. It's sacred because it had to fight for its life and won. So you're fluent in Haida? Mm-hmm. I'm the youngest fluent and I'm old, so that's how we know it's in trouble. You know, there's about probably maybe 20 Haida language speakers now in Skidigan. It's hanging on by a thread. I would say if we lose the Haida language, how are our ancestors going to understand us when we pray? They don't know English. When I was going to school, my teacher said when culture is scarce, one of the first things they lose is Haida language. Oh, yeah. And then not long after the language is gone, then the culture is gone. And that's, um, that's scary. That's really scary. One of those fluent speakers, Dolores Churchill, She's one of the actors and helped translate the script. And they even said, you know, they she and her sister are two of the just 20 people who speak always, Haida today. I always thought in Haida. She's Every, now 88 everything. years old, yeah. but vividly you know, remembers hearing a story out. in her younger days. Yeah. An elder spoke of a prophecy yeah. and of the fate of the Haida language. She said that when these people came, we would forget how to speak our own language. And she would cry. And everybody else would kind of smile or giggle because we were all speaking Haida. And we couldn't imagine that we'd all forget how to speak our language. It's our language. We're trying to take it back. It was forcefully taken from us. And we're doing the best we can to bring it back. Katla. Haida is notoriously hard to learn. There are sounds that don't exist in any other language. It's just hard. It's hard to talk about because we are losing it. And then there's no elders left anymore to ask questions about the language. 
Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. It's just hard to imagine that younger people now have to be the language keepers. We are the stories we tell, and the whole history of colonization has been one of a taking and of the government unilaterally making decisions about everything really, even our day-to-day -day life. And so with that comes a sort of an attitude or a sense of dependency and victim. And so as we've taken steps in asserting our laws over the landscape and, and fulfilling our responsibilities, we see less of that attitude in the younger generation who didn't have to face that same history, who didn't have to face what our elders went through. And so they have a completely different story that they see. They see a history where we have power and words mean something and the actions when we say no more, then we mean no more and we will do whatever it takes to protect the land. In British Columbia, a dispute over the future of a wilderness area in the Queen Charlotte Islands has led to a confrontation. The loggers and the Indians have been negotiating unsuccessfully for the past 12 years. This week, a group of Haida Indians began obstructing the passage of logging crews into the South Moresby area. I think we're, yeah, we're very optimistic. Because you know, when you ask kids whether they're in grade kindergarten to graduation, do you guys know what Lyle Island is? You know, every single one of those kids, whether they're Hyde or not, know the story. Right? So it's up to us to make sure that they know the rest of the story so you know that they can feel inspired to uh, you know to come work and protect Hyde Gwaii. I mean, that's what it's all about. <laughs> 